Okay, so we had a build around submission for me to revisit red white smoldering egg. I actually think this is a very reasonable color combination to pair with this card inside of standard. So smoldering egg notably cares about the total mana that you've spent on an instant or sorcery in order to work towards flipping it, which in red white means that sacred fire Angel Fire Ignition, as well as Electric Revelation here, these are all single cards that flip a Smoldering Egg all the way over. This is eight mana, this is seven, this is seven. The rest of this deck just has little bits of interaction. We've got Dragon Fire and Cathartic Pyre as cheap removal. We've got some Dragon to the top end to race along with Redain as disruption. And then we've got some Sejiri Shelter here as protection for our threats as well as some uh, some land split cards. So let's go ahead and dive on into some games with this and see how this feels in a uh, post-Worlds metagame. We played, played something like this at the very start of the format and it felt kind of reasonable. I'm interested to see if it feels like it's still competitive as the format's developed more. I love my fiber internet chat. Just upload a two hour video to YouTube in less than 30 seconds. Could never go back to Comcast. Fiber, fiber is excellent for you chat. Keeps your internet regular. Want that good, regular, consistent internet. Hey, Corey, thanks for the 22 months. Welcome back. Untapped Snarl! Wait, that's illegal. Uh, I think Lorehold Command is kind of slow and bad in this format. Only dealing three damage misses a lot of things and five mana is a lot for a removal spell. Just gonna kill one of these, keep my life total high a little bit here. I'm gonna go ahead and smashing here with the same logic. Yeah, same Navier. When we were when we were looking at at houses a few years ago, having fiber internet in the town where we live was a must. I think I'm gonna attack my gold span into their Legion Angel here, and then we can Sejiri Shelter if they block. What a kiss! Thank you for the 35 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Closing on the three years. By the time you get to three years, we should have brand new three year sub badges. I'm so excited. Entropy Engine, thanks for the half a year. Welcome back. Really want to draw one of our spells that flips the smoldering egg on its own, huh? Yeah, we definitely wanted them to block. How about a land chat? Do you think drawing another land is good for us? What's going on, Samir? Thanks for the follow. Welcome back. Or thanks for the year and a half. Welcome back. Mixing up my auto responses. For those of you that are just getting here, I was awakened by a a toddler at 4 a.m. this morning and did not get back to bed right away. So we're a little bit. We're not quite on our on our A game. Alright, I mean if we draw 
If we draw, what's it called? We draw angelic intervention, we could win this. They're, they're dead to intervention. How about Shatter Skull Smashing Shatter? Are they dead to that? Not quite, but they're dead in two, right? Spell lands are great, Chip. They didn't attack with their menace creature. Do they have a removal spell here? I'm really surprised they didn't attack with this if they don't have a way to kill this. They would have, they would have had lethal this turn if they would have hit us with the hive mind last turn. Spans lethal. So if I play the backside and they remember their hive mind exi exists, I die. At all. At all. We should have died a couple turns sooner there if the opponent had played better, but our deck just uh, just did not give us a shot flooding out there. Ordain does not seem particularly good. Brutal Cathar sounds good. Heated Debate sounds good. Cinderclasm is probably kind of okay. Not a great hand, but definitely keepable. Not just one untapped snarl, but two chat. If they name Dragonfire, this is a ghost. If they name anything else, it's just them them having a second to do stuff. There's no reason for them to name a four of we've already played. All right, they were turning the stream on. Got it. That uh, that makes it even a little bit more embarrassing. They should have been if they would have been watching earlier, they would have realized they missed lethal earlier. Hopefully, they can they can up their game by watching. The 
lot of money on the line here. Yeah, exactly. Need the overlay to add an eye to our cards in this situation. Yep. Man, they're so close to dead. They're so close to dead shit. Flashing it back kills them? No. And ghosts get, some, get embarrassed when they're called out. Nah, people like that don't have shame chat. They know what they're doing. It's really kind of embarrassing that they're watching the stream right now and they punted this lethal. So if they would have put this counter here, I would have been forced to block this, right? Because I would have been at seven. But now because they put this counter here, instead of putting it here, I can dragon fire to kill this brutal Cathar and get my dragon back, which puts me to seven off the Silver Quill Silencer. And now I can eat their three, three in combat and go to one and then untap and kill them. So if they'd have done it the other way, I would have been forced to block and trade here and then I'm behind and can't come back but they targeted the wrong thing there. All right, I'm gonna trim two Dragon's Fires and bring in two Cathartic Fires to make their ghosting a little bit worse for their Silver Quill Silencers. So that's the second game in a row they missed lethal. We were able to punish them for it this time. Feels good, feels good, man. What tipped us off they were ghosting? They named a card with Silver Quill Silencer that we had already cast after waiting like 30 seconds to pick what they were naming because the second card was in our hand. Someone said their username is in the chat list too. Yeah, Red Adversary is very bad because you don't spend mana on the cards you're flashing back. Sporadic Penguins doesn't really work with Smoldering Egg. Spite, I, I, I maybe should mulligan this. It's a little bit on the slow side. No one drop is good for us. Come 
on, Chad. If you're smart enough to ghost efficiently, you wouldn't need to cheat at magic to begin with. Maybe they felt bad because we called them out. They named that very quickly and they named a card we didn't have. PMR is no longer in the chat list. God bless. See, chat, this is why you should shame and heckle people who are anti-vaxxers, because peer pressure works. Encourage people to do the right thing. Oh, that's actually, I was going to say, I kind of want to block here because then I get to do one to each of these, but I actually can't because this is going to make my thing cost more. So I guess, I guess we just kill Lumi because if I want to do this for X's two, it costs me six now, but I can do it for X's three or X's one and only three mana. They have a removal spell for gold span and we don't draw another creature. We're going to be in a bad spot here. Hopefully we draw a protection spell off the top. Yikes. Unfortunate we didn't really have spells in the, uh, the first and third game this match. Wait, did they miss lethal again? Oh, they don't have a land. Goldspan Dragon is the best draw in our deck. Oh, they had the land and they did miss lethal. Got it. Good shit. This is a no justice stream chat. There's no justice for missing lethal. See, they should have they should have left the stream open, chat. They would have killed me a turn sooner. Doctors. I think this is definitely keepable at six. If it draws a white source, it's quite good. So the 21 months disc, welcome back. Yeah, well, thankfully for their child engineer, their school will likely require vaccination at some point. Should we reveal our smoldering egg there, chat? What do you think? That's the power play. No. This angel gets to kill one of our eggs now.
I think it is more than possible to get through to people who are anti-vaxxers or QAnon followers. It's just, you're basically trying to deprogram people who are part of a cult. So the amount of energy and effort that it takes to deprogram them is not something that I personally am going to invest into anyone. Nobody, no one that I have a personal attachment to is into any of those sort of things. So there's nobody, nobody in my life that's worth investing that amount of time into. You have, if you have someone in your life that's had their well poisoned, good luck, Godspeed. It's not, not an easy task. So I think we want Cathar and Heated Debate to kill their angel tokens. It's a great way to put it. There are people worth saving, but I am not their savior. We trim the pyre because this can kick up to dealing four damage with these so we can kill their slightly bigger angels. And there's other people that probably aren't worth saving, like the person with the KKK username. I want that one should probably go on the reported to watch see list. A great draw. Oh, punish for discarding the basic chip. Yikes, we're gonna lose this game because I binned those lands. Should have should have binned the pathway. I discarded the star because it was gonna be tapped, digging for an untapped land, but we might get punished here. Our sacred fires can hopefully help us punch through next turn. Okay, that's a great draw. So we get to dragon fire, choose a dragon I control, target this, choose this. We get a trigger. And then we get to sacred fire this, kill it with the trigger, smack them for four. That is incredibly good against us. Are we dead? We just like can't beat this rampage, right?
Yeah, I can't I can't take the rampage off the board and they just have so many creatures. I guess I guess we could try and outgrind it. The problem is I have to like kill their stuff and I can't I can't really do that. Because all my stuff dies. Okay, not looking too hot for our white red deck to start here, fam. The, there's the snarls I know and love, chat. All right, blue red dragons. Electric Revelation is really bad in this matchup because we have to discard the card as part of the casting cost. So if they counterspell this, we lose the card still. So hopefully they foretell something we draw on tap land here. Okay, yeah, this is this is ideal. This now all they're getting is good. Yeah, the fact that Magic Arena doesn't have an in-game report function is uh, is a huge miss. Even if they counterspell this, I still get the Smoldering Egg trigger, so I'm gonna go ahead and just jam here. If it resolves that, great. that's great. If it doesn't, uh, we get to, get to hit them. Snarls enter the graveyard untapped. <laughs> Gosh, we're so close to lethal. Might have been right to target the gold span with the ash mouth trigger here. So that way they wouldn't get another treasure when I sacred fire it if they have the counter spell. Wanted to be greedy and hit their dome though. Ordain might buy us enough time to be competitive here. Spellbinder's good. Heated Debate is great. Cathartic Pyre doesn't really kill anything meaningful. Uh, this card sucks when it gets counterspelled. Hmm. 
Me too. Finishing, finishing out the slow lane cycle would be nice. We need, we need more lands, chat. Huge, huge tracks. Twitch's block list for usernames is a hard-coded if statement. Yikes. That's a, I thought uh, Twitch's chat backend is... Twitch's chat backend is IRC, I thought, right? Is that how IRC handles? Well, I guess blocks are different because blocks is, has to do with DMs, right? So chat, chat's IRC, the DMs are not IRC, I don't, I don't believe. I'm sure the two and a half years, Zafa, welcome back. Good morning, good morning. Well, we get to put Epiphany into exile at least. So they can't foretell it, so it's nine. For people asking why a hard-coded if statement list like that is bad, it's because you should probably have uh, generated variations of things too that include, like I've never done anything that does text parsing, but I'd have to imagine you would want it to be um, generated to cover a lot of like leet speak and other terms like that. That could be, yeah, maintenance isn't, isn't great on it. Yeah, it should be some form of regex, right? Regex. So you can parse a lot of different variations of those things quickly and easily. You work on a COBOL mainframe? Do you work for a major insurance company? Yes and yes and no, okay. <laughs> When I worked at a major insurance company uh, seven and a half years ago, before my oldest son was born, they were just then trying to move away from COBOL and mainframes to Linux servers. I, I honestly, based on how quickly those large companies move, I wouldn't be surprised if they're still using COBOL mainframes today. They're, they're, they're glacial chat. All right, I think we've died. Cobalt, Cobalt engineers do get very good money because there are not a lot of them left.
Hello, darkness, my old friend. My opponent's taking turns again. I'm gonna reach for the top right before they spend attacking me all night. Do 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 Ah, dot matrix printers. We used we used dot matrix at the school that I worked at during undergrad because they did uh they printed onto transparency paper really easily. So you had two copies. You had a receipt to give the customer and one to one to store for the business records. Should we just refer to this card as Magic Twitter, by the way? I feel like I feel like if I called this card Magic Twitter, people would understand what I'm talking about. Isn't maddening cacophony magic Twitter? There's a lot of there's a lot of good ones you could you could name it after. All right, fam. What if we just like sacred fire their face here? Looking to just hit like running lands here, so we can flash this back in two turns. I would bet my opponent saw this Moonvale region coming. I mean, is our deck full of four and five mana spells kind of clunky and awkward against decks that are playing four and five mana spells but also have the most efficient card draw spell ever printed inside of blue? Yeah, definitely. Wait, that doesn't work, right? Because it chooses it as zero. I need to reveal one from my hand. Which is the most efficient card draw spell ever printed in blue? Expressive iteration. Expressive iteration is seeing play in literally every format of magic it's legal in.
Will we get another turn? Find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. Two plus four plus six plus eight. Who do we appreciate? Dead opponents, 20 um, attack with birds. Do, 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 do. I should wait till they attack, maybe? Well, at least. Chat, we're on the scoreboard. Blessed, blessed be the ash mouth, chat. For its mouth is hot and full of fire. Fire. It seems like it's a lot easier to win the game when we get a turn to play. It's really, it's really weird. See, chat, an epiphany deck lost an entire match of magic. It's fine. Leave it alone. You're just whiny crybabies. Super balanced. What's going on, Dizzy? Thanks for the 16 months. Welcome back. Thank you, Boomer Magic Man, for lighting the way. That's like whenever the Boomers are like, we didn't used to always have standard band, frabble, rabble, rabble. It's like, yeah, and you used to look up deck lists on your dial-up internet and your, your ingest magazine or whatever it was called. Times, times change. Get with them. What's going on, hero? Thanks for the two years. Welcome back. really good for us. This gold span dragon's gonna resolve. Hey, Thumbs. Thanks for the tier two. Thanks for the almost year and a half. Welcome back. By the time you hit a year and a half, Thumbs, we're gonna have new sub badges for people for every half year. Do I protect this? I think yes. There's a there's a good chance that they have a counterspell for it on the way back down later, so 
crunch. Affinity standard. I wasn't even playing standard back then. I was playing magic, but not standard. Hey, morning me. don't think standard really gets solved. I don't think arena meaningfully solves standard any faster than... I don't think arena meaningfully solves standard any faster than Magic Online used to. I think we just play a lot. I have a lot more people playing a lot more games. So like there's more people bitching when it's not good. My theory, and I'm sticking to it. When, sta when standard was solved and dry in previous Moto eras, most people were only playing standard once a week in FNM. So the fact that it was a little bit dry was like six matches a week, not 60 matches a week, not six matches a day. I, I would also like to say there's this idea that solved equals bad. I actually think a lot of the known solved decks in this current standard format are sweet and generate good games of magic because there's lots of counterplay and lots of decent ways to attack them. Aldrin's Epiphany is just not that though. It doesn't really generate sweet or interesting games of magic. My, my objection to Aldrin's Epiphany is largely play pattern objections, not raw power level. Well, another thing too to think about, not even just normalized playing net decks versus brews, is that Magic Arena's economy punishes you for brewing and rewards you for net decking. The fact that you have very limited wild cards to work with at any given point means that there's a huge risk associated with crafting cards that could end up not being good. So you're encouraged to spend your limited resources on playing the better decks because you know that they're more likely to provide you decent games for yourself. MTGO doesn't have an expensive problem. You can just rent decks. Listen... For the most recent MTGO standard tournament, the rental services literally ran out of cards like Faceless Havens and stuff like that. So you'd be wrong to say that the Moto economy has sorted itself appropriately. Hope your, hope your Moto rental limit can afford $100 Ragavans. All right, so we'll board like we boarded a second ago. Heated debate in Elite Spellbinder in. We'll cut these Cathartic Pyres and these Revelations. My last two cuts last time. I think they're printing something in the next set to counter Epiphany. I'll take that bet. How much How much you want to put on that? You want to give me at least one to one odds? I just think it's a very, it's a very unlikely possibility is my point. Also like the types of effects that you would print to counter it, you'd basically need a, a way to interact with the exile zone, right? Which is not something they do particularly frequently. Like that's a pretty, pretty rare access for them to design cards on. Or 
protection from extra turns. So, they do design cards really far in advance that they can't see something's a problem and then design a card to fix it for the next set. But something that Wizards of the Coast does pretty commonly is they'll know an effect is powerful and explicitly put a counter for it in a later set, expecting to let that powerful thing run rampant for X standard season and then dial it back once they print something to counter it. Wilderness, Wilderness Reclamation and 3 Mana Tefri are a good example of this. They're also a good example of sometimes the cure is worse than the original disease. I can't imagine Test of Talents was included to counter the foretell, the foretell card. Maybe, maybe if Test of Talents also took cards out of foretell, I'd agree with that, but I'd be incredibly surprised if that was the case. I think we're dead, fam. Sacred Fire is very bad when we don't have egg. Yeah. You're not, you're not wrong. In this matchup specifically, it's very bad when we don't have egg. Deck kind of plays itself. Yeah, I mean, it's playing a lot of powerful cards. I think I want to just murder this now while they're tapped out. I'm not getting two counters on this feels a little bit bad, but I have Sacred Fire to go with this. So I want to just kill this while the kill it is good and they don't have counter mana up. Yikes. Untapped land is good here at least. Just chill because we can fire flashback fire here flip the egg have lethal next turn all right well we're, we're 2-0 against is a dragon so far this morning 
And is it Dragons won the World Championship? So if Boros Dragons is 2-0 against that, clearly our deck is busted, chap. Uh, I don't know that core sets are strictly supposed to be weak in power level. Like Jace Friend's Prodigy was a core set card. I think I think core sets are more um, about like the average complexity of the cards, more so than raw power level. You were surprised Boros had no representation this weekend. I'm not. This deck's probably not, not great into the dedicated turns decks. The previous opponent was playing like gold spans and stuff. Age of Treacher is also a corset card. Yeah, that's a good shout. I appreciate all the busted corset cards people are listing in chat. Man, there's a lot of them. Our opponent duressed us and I was a little concerned they were playing the turns deck and then they played Delver of Secrets, so I'm a lot less worried now. mid-range focus standard, Neil. I just want, like, one format where I could just, like, play mid-range decks and not feel embarrassed about it. Like, just just, just pick one. Just get, give me one. That doesn't need to be every format, but just give, give me one of them. And I ain't greedy. We can have some variety in our formats. It's sealed. Yikes. Mid-range decks don't mean that combo doesn't exist. A mid-range deck for Magic Zoomers that aren't familiar with that term, and honestly, I can't blame you. Traditional mid-range has had a pretty miserable time in Magic in general for the last little bit now. There's a few different ways you could define it, but in my opinion, the best way to define a mid-range deck is Mid-range decks assume different roles in different matchups. So mid-range decks are beatdown decks against control decks, and they're controlling decks against aggro decks. Usually mid-range decks are headlined by decent-sized creatures that can be used to both apply pressure and block efficiently against decks getting under them. No, I think I agree with Marty. Midrange was very good in RTR and uh, GNR standard.
Yeah, there's a huge difference between mid-range and toolbox. So, mid-range decks can be toolbox decks, but toolbox decks don't have to be mid-range decks. So, toolbox, as far as jargon goes, refers to a deck with some kind of tutor effect, such as Court of Calling. And toolboxing in a card game means you can find different answers in different situations. So you like a card that lets you play a bunch of one ofs that you can search for those one ofs in key spots where they're good. Not being able to play a spell here feels real bad. Flipping their werewolf. Yikes. We definitely can, Xanthius. Thanks for the submission. Thanks for the bits. Would love to love to get clerics back on the docket. Nah, Salt Eye Ultimatum, there hasn't been a toolbox deck in standard in, gosh, I, I can't remember the last time a toolbox deck was in standard. Usually, usually toolbox decks are something that are in uh, older non-rotating formats. Yeah, Salt, Salt Eye Ultimatum didn't toolbox for different answers. It was just a one card combo, basically. Salt Eye, Salt Eye Ultimatum would be classified as a combo control deck. in my opinion. Yeah, Cleric Pod's kind of a toolbox deck. Traverse traverse the Elvenwald is a good shout. That was probably the last true toolbox deck that was standard legal. Traverse, traverse the Elvenwald. This uh, is a good shout. I think this is a spell and we'll leave this the flexibility, or this is a land and we'll leave this the flexibility to be a spell. Killing all their things seems most important in this matchup. Prioritize leaving basics in my hand in case we draw a snarl.
Speaking of Cleric Pod, that triple D command in the title stands for Daily Deck Digest. If you haven't checked out my new YouTube venture, Cleric Pod was one of the first highlights we had up there. Every single day, seven days a week, I'll be posting an edited deck list highlight there, doing a deck tech, thoughts on things the deck could do better, showcasing a couple of matches with that deck doing its best thing possible. This will differ from my normal long form YouTube content that's just direct stream cuts where there's miscellaneous bits of downtime or garbage time. That channel is going to be more concise, posting a 30 to 45 minute video every single day. Uh, the Yorian Incarnation deck was historic. So there are no losses on the new YouTube channel. Uh, I don't think that's strictly correct. It'll probably be more wins than not, but if there's something to be learned or an interesting close game that's a loss, that'll be fine. Well, my current well-organized YouTube channel doesn't do things to favor the algorithms. So that's the goal of these new channels, Drunk Owl. Is to par parlay favor with our AI over AI overlords. Always be nice to your toaster. We'll remember you when the robot uprising happens. I would wager their hand also looks somewhat similar to ours, and that is a bunch of counter spells and removal spells. Old Span Dragon Chant, so nice we'll cast it twice. What do they need environmental sciences for? Do they need more than five lands? Having the strangest sense of deja vu chat. This one gonna fish up uh, mascot exhibition because they have six. This is seven already. Third time's the charm, fam. Third time's the charm. Um, 
The next standard legal set is releasing in about a month, Wargy, so I would assume we're not getting a direct to historic release until sometime in December at the earliest. But as is essentially always the case, Wizards communication or lack thereof is truly god awful, so we actually just don't know. Gonna be just Kai Horizons for Historic in case you thought they were sorry. Well, it's for the follow heathen. The next two qualifiers are both Historic. Really? I, when do when do those happen? Although I also am kind of of the opinion that probably doesn't mean anything because Wizards is kind of notorious for like having events in dead formats. Uh, usually spoiler seasons have been two weeks recently, so I would venture to guess we'll start the next spoiler season uh, right, right around October. Which starting starting spoiler season during during Halloween for this type of set makes a lot of sense. Can I have a creature, please. Yeah, I'm just flooded and died again. Strong 10, 11, 12 lands in 18 cards. I'm gonna cast this, so I'll only put some counters on here, but also flip their werewolf back at least. I mean, I have I have creature lands and I have seven spell lands in the deck. I think I think we only have like twenty non-utility lands. Let's take uh, take a peek. I think we're at twenty or twenty-one non non-utility lands. There's something about Jumpstart coming back on the 15th. That's interesting. Wonder if it'll be new stuff or if it's uh, just the same old. Yeah, I have, I have 19. We have 21 total just lands, two of which are done in the bugbear. Let's go up a 10. Get down to, get down to 18. Anything I'm hoping to see for the new Innistrad set? Falcon Wrath Aristocrat. I think would be a sweet reprint. I see people talking about whether or not the last jumpstart was a success or not. All I'm going to say is I would venture to guess the average player that enjoys things like jumpstart is probably a little bit less likely to be plugged into magic enough to be in places like Twitch and Reddit. 
I think Jumpstart is a phenomenal, more casual game mode that's great at letting people play a variety of magic modes without having to draft or build sealed decks themselves. I would be pretty surprised if it wasn't incredibly successful as a format on Arena. Keep killing the ramp, I think. Our egg here, right? Hey, Clinic, thanks for the two and a half years. Welcome back. Hopefully, by the end of the week, we'll have a new sub badge for you for that. Chat, they're so they're so good, chat. Casual players play on Arena. Yeah. RG Price, thanks for the two months. Welcome back. None of the none of the digital only jumpstart cards ended up being in anything very competitive. Just for the over the, for the over two years, Mister's out too. I think we just jam this right. They told me, my artist told me it'd be done by Friday. They said they're gonna try to get it done by Thursday so we can use them on stream Friday. We have lethal in the air next turn with flashback this deal to deal eight. next variety game been decided yet it's not i've been um i've been playing an unhealthy amount of pokemon unite still so we're doing that in the afternoons again this week i'm sure i'm sure at some point i'll be less infatuated with my pokemon beating each other up in a moba but for the time for the time being i'm gonna play a bunch of that i'm playing playing a bunch of it off stream too game's super fun So we want all of these removal spells. I think we cut the redeems. They like make chariot cost slightly more, but this opponent doesn't have snow lands. I might have too many. I might have too many doom blades in my sideboard chat. It definitely feels like I have too much removal here, huh? Maybe this is not a heated debate matchup since I have burning hands to bring in. Actually, Neil, one on one Magic the Gathering is multiple people playing Magic the Gathering together. So you could argue that Magic the Gathering is an exclusively multiplayer game. And Magic the Gathering Arena supports multiplayer. Yeah. 
Maybe we trim a couple of these moon veils. It's probably going too low on threats, right? Like this is, this is 12. Maybe Cathar was not good enough here. We didn't see running seven out of them and they had big dragons instead. You're the best. Uh, someone asked if I plan to do some Pokemon uh, TCG stuff when their new client drops. I do actually. In fact, to shout out the uh, the Pokemon company, where's my where's my link? There it is. I told I told I told the Pokemon company I plan to check out their new client when it comes out, and then this showed up on my doorstep last week. So definitely, definitely more excited to try it out. Try it out after that. Free free stuff is great, champ. The boys, needless to say, the boys are very excited. I've expanded into doing some Pokemon stuff. All right, so I think it's important. Like, there's some appeal to getting down the second egg here, but I think... I think we need to kill this before they chariot me next turn. So we'll just like drop a tap land here and then plan to kill this. Oh, foo. I made it night yet. Listen, I'm going to blame the pizza that's in front of me. Christy and I, Christy and I got Giordano's for dinner last night, so we've got some, some solid leftovers for the next few days. Deep dish, deep dish is great chip. This, it is a thick pie. Gosh, it's so unfortunate that I let it pass tonight. That's such a big punt against their deck. Mm, that's a good thought. Yeah, maybe I should have cast the Sacred Fire in my turn to push it back today. Yeah, I, pr I probably should have done that. In fact, I think I'm doing this now anyways, just because I want to use this to flip these next turn. Nice, that's, that's great. Okay, so now we get to do this, ditch this, flip these.
I'd rather have the heated debates and the cinder clasms. Have more ways to kill gold spans. Listen, chat. There's no need to argue about the best types of pizza. It's fine for to enjoy lots of different delicious cheese-based things. You burn my egg down. Rude. Okay, if this gold span gets to live here and we get to put angel fire ignition on it next turn, we should be in the driver's seat, huh? We'll get to heated debate something here. Yeah, I used Burning Hands as opposed to Heated Debate on the Chariot because Burning Hands doesn't kill Goldspan. I want ways to kill the Goldspan Dragons. Goldspan be, sc Gold be scary, yo. Hey, the old 12 point swing and an untapped creature.
Alright, they're dead, right? Clean living here. Hey, Eric, thanks for the 15 months. Welcome back. Felt relatively reasonable. Angel Angel Fire has felt like a really powerful card. We played that in we played it in Naya Feather last week in Historic, and it felt good. So Bloodthirsty Adversary doesn't spend mana to recast the spell that you're playing, so it actually doesn't put counters on your Smoldering Egg, which I think makes it quite bad here. Also, a number of our spells already flash back on their own. Build your own Ember Cleave. Was he putting Angel Fire on a double strike creature? Because I feel like equating this to Ember Cleave without involving double strike is a pretty big miss. Okay, so double double strike is sure. Like this card, this card's pretty far off of Ember Cleave on its own. I actually like the design on, on this a lot because it helps you win races by by buffing your thing. Yeah, it's, this card's also much worse against removal, right? Is a, is a big deal. Either of us having plays till turn three definitely feels like it bodes well for our hand full of big things. It is it is nice that they largely unban blocking, I agree. It might be right to just drag and fire here. Oh wait, they can't chariot this turn. No, this is fine. Redain, Redain keeping them off of chariot here is great. I was thinking I don't want them to chariot and haste it, but they actually can't do that. Shiggity Shrek to get wrecked. Casual 10 flying in the air. Uh, this is a different opponent than our previous opponent. Our previous opponent was Diamond 1, right? Same, same archetype we just played against, but I believe this is a different opponent. They don't get to exile anything because it's night right now. Get wrecked. And then there's no reason to show them angel fire ignition here because I don't want them to know that we have that in the postboard games. I like this plan, just tans and heated debates in. We'll trim the redeans and uh, the revelations.
gosh, this seven spell hand is so good if we draw lands for the first five draws, Chip. The mulligans are tough. This one, not so much. Okie doke. We've been really good at having untapped snarls today, Chip. Now, unfortunately, I don't have anything to do with my mana, so it's now night. Just gonna keep killing their stuff here. Pick up. Curve elegantly into our big, our bigger dragons here. Uh, I have a few different borderless slash full art lands that I click on at different points. I'm a free spirit, man. I can play whatever kind of basics I want. Can't keep me down. Unless you have to play Snow Basics, yeah. Yeah, Snow Basics. Oh, by the way, Christy and I watched the new Pokemon movie with the boys on Netflix over the weekend, and it's basically Ash and the Pokemon fighting against Big Pharma from destroying the world, so it's got a good, it's got a good message tied up inside of it, yet. I think I want to turn this Moonveil into two cards. Uh, Secrets of the Jungle. It was a direct, direct to Netflix movie. It was, it was good. Now let's do, let's do this first actually, and then we can do this. All right, I'll take a do over, please. Noise. They did, they did curse our gold span dragon. He's a little bit more expensive than usual.
All right, we're 2-0 in the blue-red matchup so far this morning. It's afternoon now, see if we can keep that up here for our last match of the afternoon. It's a Wari disruption. That's fine, it was gonna catch us at some point anyways with these petties. Yes, yeah, they did. They did, in fact, reanimate the original Pokemon movie on Netflix. Also watch that one with the boys. Mewtwo Strikes Back. No, the Thoughtseize bug has never been a real thing. Or has it? The truth is out there. Wake up, sheeple. Yeah, this is, so we played something very close to this uh, in like the first week this format existed and it felt reasonable then too. My my plans for the next, the next two to three weeks now are to slowly loop back around to decks we kind of rapid fired through at the start of the format and see if we can get a feel for what they look like now that the format's more developed and spend, spend a little bit longer time on them now too. Because when we, when we don't have endless deck submissions, I don't mind spending, you know, two, two and a half hours on a deck rather than 60 to 90 minutes. At the, at the start of the format, when things are fresh, I like to try and get through as much things as possible. So we'll have a little bit more time to, to refine and tune with a little bit more, more time spent on them. wanted to draw lane there. Uh, I don't know that Grixis Dragons is very good. Supposed to hold that land to discard the revelation flashback next turn. The sheep analogy is only weird with Christians and the Bible referring to people as a flock implies that those types of people have the critical awareness of themselves, the things that they supposedly believe in to be logically consistent, which generally speaking they don't. I think we discard this for a random card with no other spells in my hand. Yeah, good stuff. All right, so... If I draw a land, they die? How? Oh, the firing up Den of the Bugbear was lethal. It was. That's fine. We're still pretty solidly in the driver's seat here, right? I've talked, I've talked about my upbringing on stream before, but like for people that haven't heard me talk about it, I was raised like Catholic, altar boy, church lecturer, the whole nine yards. As I, as I finished high school and got into college and learned to think critically and independently, realizing, realizing what a lot of my um, supposedly 
uh, Christian slash Catholic people thought and believed and how they treated others out in the world made me quickly realize most of their church preachings were a whole load of shit that they didn't believe. So, Revelations out, Pyre's out, Heated Debates in, Elite Spellbinders in, I want to trim two more, Sacred Fire's pretty medium. Oh, we've been boarding so far, let's not rock the boat, it's felt pretty good. Yeah, I agree with Magus. If people actually followed the practices and the rules and things and like the advice from the Bible, like they would be a lot of pretty decent people. Je Jesus, as is talked about in the Bible, would be what the conservatives today would describe as a dirty, filthy, so dirty, filthy socialist slash communist. He wanted, he wanted to feed people and take care of people. He would, he would certainly be a social justice warrior. The actual, the actual teachings that come from there aren't what pushed me away from it so much as seeing how the average person behaved who was a part of that group. It was just a bunch of hypocrites. Hey, Drax, thanks for the sub gifts. Appreciate the support. There's another untapped land tier. Hopefully they jam a goldspan dragon next turn and we get to kill it with heated debate and then untap and jam our own. Yeah, I don't I don't associate with, you know, Republicans in general either. J groups that have large like that either. Dr. Jazzin is the thing. So you're right. That's not exclusive to, to the church, but. I also distance myself from those types of groups in general. And remember to the new newest members of Hoaglandia, if you're confused about your gift of speech, Drax can always fix that for you. for the follow Taylor good afternoon all right they're spending mana here spinning their tires might be able to run them down yeah that's definitely the case wub they sh bolted that in what are we doing with four mana they like hoping to find a uh, hoping to find like a dragon's fire plus a plus a dragon. Okay, thundering rebukes another good pickup. We do still have Redain here, so they're foretold. Um, they're foretold what's it called do cost them extra at the moment. Uh, and I have enough mana to Moonveil and Spellbinder this turn, so that's great. I think I want to do that and just put Lethal into play here. We can lead on this because this might tell us we don't want to do this. Memory Deluge costs eight now. Yeah, I'm just going to, that's going to jam. Sweet. All right, and that, we actually crushed them quick enough that 
I thought that was going to be our last one. Let's do, let's do one more. This thing's actually been really reasonable. Four, four main deck Gradine has been. Has been pretty decent in this session. All of our all of our threats being flying creatures has also felt pretty good. Take a mulligan here. Only two lands and no white source. Definitely uh, not a keeper. Our deck heard me say I was enjoying playing it. So now it's going to try my patience. The shuffler's coming for us, fam. It knows where we play. Just another untapped snarl. This wizard dream. It's so it's so strange and powerful. With their powers combined. Tap Snowland. This gets to attack through Redain. But then we can kill it next turn and she keeps him off of a chariot for a little bit here. We're definitely killing the wolf pup this turn before it gets out of control. supposed to do this on my turn or during their upkeep they could have drawn a uh oh if they have inscription of abundance here i get got inscriptions a card they main deck sometimes they have main deck snake fail too though but they only have one man on my turn yeah yeah i deserve this bad i definitely definitely should have done that on my turn to play around inscription it's a pretty big miss i think that likely loses us the game Uh, we have to jump block next turn. Definitely a mistake on my part. I don't think Redain is good enough to leave in post board in this matchup. I think she's like fine game one, but I'm largely playing this for the sweeper based control decks. Definitely want my spot removal on. Sacred Fire probably doesn't kill enough things to be worth leaving in. Like, they have some two toughness things, but not a ton. Like, we'll leave in two copies because they're good with Smoldering Egg. But outside of the synergy with Egg, it's probably not great. Is Brutal Cathar too soft to the green kill spells? Yeah, I think so. Um, if we see Renin 7 this game, I'll bring in Cathar for cleaning up the tokens in the third game. But I'm not sure exactly how they're gonna their deck is built or how they're gonna sideboard against me, so there's a chance that they don't have Renin 7 here after seeing my main deck redeems. So I might I might revisit the Cathars if we have a game three based on what we see here. This is definitely a spell here, a land here to start. 
want to get to uh, get to five for this. We actually have a really great curve here if we hit our land drops. We get to go egg into angel fire, angel fire. And get this flipped and attack for eight on turn four. And now we have the, the fifth land to guarantee the dragon. And if we flood a little bit, Shatter Skull Smashing can be a spell. So it says Defender, so it can't attack this turn, but it sets us up for a clean flip next turn. They attack with this Wolf Pack. I am not going to block because I don't want to lose my egg to a Blizzard Brawl. Well, I guess they can't actually, right? No, a Blizzard Brawl would work. Yeah, so my opponent just missed three points of damage here because of their sequencing. If they would have attacked first, I wouldn't have blocked. It does keep the counters when it transforms, yep. The casual 16 point swing, no big. Your move, Yugi boy. Clean living there. So no reason to block here and lose my creature to a Blizzard Brawl. We're going to have Lethal in the air next turn with the Goldspan Dragon. We're at 28. And you did. Charge. Crunch thunk. Good stuff. All right, that was the easy game. It was a game where we were on the play. And we had a good curve. Now we got to try and win one of the draw. This is a little, a little more difficult. It was, it was clean. The old 8, 8 into 12. This turn 5 drop you. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. We should probably try a Jeskai variation of this deck, which is like the blue-red build Splash, Splash Angel Fire. If you tell me drop it like it's hot is Snoop Dogg, I will believe you, but I'm also gonna profess to not know that that was Snoop Dogg myself. I think, I think killing this and stopping, stopping the turn three chariot is more important than getting my aim down soon. Just run this back. If they had a fight spell, they would have killed this last turn, right? Hey, thanks, Mox. I appreciate you keeping me around. I am, in fact, having the strangest sense of deja vu, Jeff. Are you dead yet? All right. Yeah, that's good. That's good clean living. Was linear. Uh, we interacted with them on turn two. Thank you very much. Large, large chunkers 
are pretty good against against a lot of the format. I saw someone say they like Scourge with this guy cleaning this format because like a lot of the removal people are playing is red red based or the green fighting based, right? So like when you get something like an eight eight down, it's difficult for them to play to play against. They can't take it off the board. This deck felt very reasonable because all of our threats were evasive. We had pretty decent interaction. The fact that we have, our deck doesn't have, I really like the design of this card because unlike things like Thing in the Ice, you know, our entire deck isn't just instant sorceries like a Xerox deck, right? We, we have a variety of spells that just like single-handedly flip this. And all of these spells are like, they're pretty okay on their own when we don't have egg with them. And these, these two especially letting us, you know, curve that turn two egg, turn three, play it, turn four, play it, flip it over, felt, felt really good. All right, at any rate, that's going to wrap 